Hi, I'm Eric King, and I'm a recipe developer and the creator of the baking blog, Easy Gay Oven. So I'm making no-churn s'mores ice cream, which means there's no ice cream maker required, uh, just a whisk or a hand mixer or stand mixer, whipped cream, sweetened condensed milk, chocolate, graham crackers, butter, marshmallows. So I went to journalism school and I had a passion for entertainment. A job in social media just kind of uh, landed in my lap and I took it. I always just say, we plan and God laughs. <laughs> During that time, I was also starting this other side project called Easy Gay Oven. My advice, make sure you press start. Make sure you press record. I use a combination of uh, my iPhone and my Canon 5D Mark IV. When you're starting out, it's all about what can you afford. And so I, I'm a firm believer that you can make good content even if you don't have a huge budget. My phone, computer, cameras are, are all covered in chocolate, flour, cake batter, cookie dough, um, that's just that's just part of life as a food content creator and as a baker, honestly. The most important part of my content creation process, I would say starts with lighting. So much of what you see on social media is all about lighting. Um, it's what makes food either look good or not so good. It's why you see like people taking, you know, photos in restaurants with their flash and it's like, no one wants to see it. That's awful. Like, <laughs> it looks terrible. Lighting is really important and I work with natural light. I'm lucky to have a kitchen where I have two windows. So, um, you know, if it's nice out, I can get great content that day. If it's not so nice out, maybe I wait till the next day. We're blessed with a lot of sunlight. Uh and direct sunlight right through this window right now. So, so yeah. And I'm gonna put my cookbooks under it. Can't get another one. Because, because it's a little early, the sun's only coming in in this corner and I wanted to move my work surface up. So I've placed them on a stack of um, Riffa Contessa cookbooks. When the sun is gonna be at an optimal position and when it's gonna go down. So in the winter, I have to start earlier or I have to break it into two shoot days because let's say it's a cake and it has to cool and then it has to chill and then I have to frost it. So a lot a lot of moving parts that are sometimes not in your control. And then I also have two roommates who <laughs> have to use the kitchen too. Um, uh, but they can, don't worry. Okay, so um, I'm gonna melt the chocolate and I'm just gonna use a double boiler we have to go over to the stove, which isn't ideal, but that'll be a short part of the video. So I've always had this passion for baking. I grew up baking with my mom. I had this passion uh, my whole life and it started to grow a lot in college. Baking was sort of my escape. It was my hobby. Um, it was my creative outlet. And so I just got more and more interested in it and I would try more challenging bakes and I started posting them on Instagram. Friends would start to say like, oh my gosh, like this is so cool. You need to start a separate Instagram for this. You need to like make this a thing. But I knew I wanted to incorporate, you know, some, some part of my identity. I'm gay, easy bake oven. And then we said easy gay oven. And um, we had a lot of ideas before that, but that one was like, okay, that's obviously it. I have to say the, <laughs> the handle idea was not mine. It was my friends. Uh, but I got the trademark. So <laughs> there's like a gram swirl that's happening in the no churn s'mores ice cream. Um, I'm gonna grind together graham crackers with uh, unsalted butter, uh, melted unsalted butter in this food processor. I started uh, the Instagram Easy Gay Oven in July 2019. Over the next two years, it, it grew and people started to take notice and my account grew. I started off uh, making other people's recipes and posting photos of them online. I became very interested in, in food photography. Brands started to take notice. Companies started to take notice. One of my first clients was uh, Netflix and their uh, Pinterest page was, was looking for recipes. Eventually that grew into a partnership where I was able to kind of have this like really lucrative side hustle while also working at my regular job. 
that is when the hobby slash passion project turned into something I was making money with. And everybody always jokes like, <laughs> like it, it seems like such a trend now where people are like, oh, I have this thing that I love. Um, and it like gives me uh, freedom from my day-to-day -day job. And let, how can I monetize it? <laughs> and that was me. Eventually, I created my own website where I posted recipes that I had developed. Making drool-worthy content. You know, you eat with your eyes, and that's why people are so, oh, your stuff's so pretty, you, 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 you care so much about what it looks like. And I do because it's, it's how, it's, it is how you taste it. I care a lot about what they look like, obviously, because those things are what people want to see on social media and online. But it's also, it is how we eat. Tapping into every sense that you have, the way that like chocolate looks. All of those things are stuff that I pay attention to. So before I start shooting, I think, what's, what's the hook? What's gonna get people's attention in the first couple seconds and really make them say, oh, that looks so good, I have to make that. This is also like hilarious me, like trying to like do anything in this freezer. This Tetris. As I've been on this like self-taught baking journey, some of the most important lessons that I've learned have definitely been, you just have to wait. So let's say like your cookies spread too much. Well, how long did you chill them for? Oh, 10 minutes. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you kind of just, you just have to be patient because so many things in baking are, are all about the time it takes. And that's what makes it so therapeutic because it is sometimes utilitarian, but it's also very much this exercise in trust. I would say one of my most like valued uh, prized ingredients is my homemade vanilla extract, which I've been um, keeping going for about hmm, three years now. It's literally vanilla beans sliced open with like vodka. And then I've just had that sitting. In my opinion, better than store-bought. Um, and it's nice because you can make a lot of it for not as much money and you can save some money. Um, it's actually right here. <laughs> you wanna see it? <laughs> um, I, actually have to, I actually have to refill it. Um, I need to get some vodka. Um, so yeah, it's a delicate balance to, to try to make your content look like it belongs on people's feeds and kind of tell people like, this, this, is, this is something you're gonna wanna watch while also remaining true to your aesthetic and, and what you are trying to do with food. I try to make it look like I'm in a real kitchen, because I am, and I'm not, you know, that's why I like to film with natural light, because I think people see that and they say, this is something I can see myself doing in my kitchen. I try to give people like more of me. No matter what, you can create great content, but the content is, is selling something else, or, you know, it's selling me. So if I want other things or other opportunities, I have to show myself. <laughs> okay, now we're ready to assemble. This is all gonna happen in, in thirds. So one third of the base, one third of the graham crackers, and then one third of the chocolates. It is all about um, the food and who you are. I would say I, I input my personality into my content by showing where things went wrong because that's what people want to know. That's what people connect with. They're like, I make mistakes in the kitchen all the time. People, people like you being your authentic self. And so if you mess up in the kitchen, I like to show it and I like to tell them. It is about the creator and it is about who's making the food. I always say this to other cr content creators. I'm like, they don't want a chocolate chip cookie recipe. They want your chocolate chip cookie recipe. And that's what, and that's why there will never, there will never be enough recipes. We'll never run out of stuff. I love thinking about what I do on social and what I do uh, with my newsletter and what I do with my website as building a community. I don't want people to think that this is a one-way street um, because I learn a lot from people online and I want, feedback from them. I want to know what recipes they want to see next. I want to know if they made something and they loved it. I want to see those things. So I really do think of it as a community. I'm not, a, I'm not like at a point where I'm so big that I can't interact with the community. So um, it's very important to me. And I think, 
I think that's the difference between a following and an engaged following, is you can have hundreds of thousands of followers. Doesn't mean much if, if they're not hooked in. And if you're not hooked in with them. I try to make really, really professional looking images that also look like they were taken in a home kitchen, because they were. What's that saying? Um, the medium is the message. It's so important to understand your medium and what people want on the platform you are creating for. YouTube's gonna be different, Instagram's gonna be different, TikTok's gonna be different. Sometimes the same content works for me, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes things will blow up on TikTok and then, you know, reach a modest amount of people on Instagram. And when I worked in social media, I could kind of attest to this. Sometimes it's just throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. There is a rhyme or reason to why things will go viral or what things will perform, but sometimes you just have to try stuff. Shooting tethered um, changed the game for me much easier. I used to just like stand on chairs and like, and then like look at the camera. Um, this just makes it easier because you can move stuff, you can look at it in the live view. My advice to people who are getting uh, started in the food blogging world, in the recipe development world, in the food content creation space is to niche down. There are so many food creators and that's great. And it's like, it's not a zero sum game. There's a, there's a part of this pie for everybody. But I would say to grow an engaged following and not just grow a following, you need to niche down. So I think it's, it's worth playing around with format. It's worth playing around with uh, length. It's worth playing around with how, how far niche can you go down? Can you just make an account that's just about sushi? Can you just make an account that's just about sushi that looks like other things? I mean, <laughs> I would say, I would say try to differentiate yourself. I want people to know that starting as a content creator, I was working on Easy Gay Oven while I had a full-time job for a long time. You know, making money with both things, but it took a long time before I was ready to take the leap. Left my full-time job at the end of 2021 and just went out on my own. And that was a big risk, but I've, I've made it work and um, it has been challenging, but it's been rewarding too. Sometimes I think if I had waited, maybe I would have never done it at all. Well, <laughs> who's hungry?